And very commonly, the answer is no, I have not. And I have to just go through my bank account, find a Lucas coffee shop, see if I can afford to have more coffee. Uh, and I have been thinking this way for a very long time. Uh, when I got to college, things between coffee and myself got a little bit more serious. My friends would start working at the local coffee shops, and I would go there with them between classes, exploring everything I could about every different type of roast. Things got even more serious when I started doing research on the coffee industry. I traveled to East Africa, where I was able to travel to Rwanda and Uganda. While I was there, I visited coffee cooperatives, as well as the local coffee shops to be able to try and figure out how they produce the coffee and what makes them so passionate about it. And I was just obsessed, and I didn't think I could actually become more obsessed with coffee. <laughs> um, through this research, I learned so much about the coffee industry and what actually goes into it. So when it starts, you have your farmers who are working all across the world to create your perfect cup of coffee. And from there, it travels from exporters to importers to your local distributors, and from there to supermarkets and your local cafe where you enjoy it. And more recently, the importance of recycling your coffee grounds has become important as well. Uh, thing, people tell me all the time that coffee is just so confusing. And don't get me wrong, it is incredibly confusing. I mean, we have five different drinks on a menu, and five of those drinks all have the same two ingredients, espresso and milk. But it's hard to understand all of that. And think about back in the 1800s and the 1900s, when you would walk down the street and you would see advertisements like this. And some of the times, you wouldn't even know that you're drinking coffee. Uh, Postums was a popular drink back in the day that was advertised to be a coffee supplement. But honestly, it was just made from milk, or milk and wheat. And then when you were talking about, when you were enjoying your coffee, people would say, this boy never had a fair chance after drinking coffee. Let me tell you, coffee is great. Uh, since the 18 and 1900s, a lot has changed. Uh, there's, the coffee market is massive, and when you look at it, there are so many different things that you have to take into consideration. There's your whole bean coffee that you can buy. There's pre-ground coffee that you can buy. You can buy your K-cups. You can buy ready-to-drink options of coffee as well. So to show you the size of what the market actually looks like and how coffee impacts you, uh, this is statistics that show just the coffee market alone when it comes to single serving, so your K-cups. And last year, Keurig Green Mountain sold over $1.2 billion in coffee in their K-cups alone. That's not even including the coffee that they sell in their bags. And that is one company and one subset of the market. Now think about all, everything I just talked about when it comes to the farmers, the producers, the exporters, and those who enjoy your coffee, and how can technology make that process so much more enjoyable for everyone involved? Uh, I think coffee is really important, and uh, my friend sent me this note the other day because would IoT actually make your coffee taste better? I honestly don't really know, but you know what it will do? It'll make making, drinking your coffee a more enjoyable experience because it might take you less time to make that coffee. It may make the farmer who's producing that coffee for you life a lot easier. Now, I want to focus on the three stakeholders that I think are the most important in the coffee industry, and that is the people who, make your, who produce your coffee, the people who serve your coffee to you, and of course, us as those who enjoy your coffee. Uh, so for those who bring you your coffee, this is a typical barista. And I have worked as a barista for many years. And when you are serving someone a cup of coffee, they're coming up to you. And while they're placing your order with you, you are, as a barista, thinking of, oh, when is the last time that I replaced that milk carafe? Oh, is that table clean? Oh, when is the next person going to come into line? Through the Internet of Things, you would be able to make this process so much more streamlined and have more efficient baristas through helping them keep track of their milk crafts. So what if a barista was able to know exactly when the temperature in their milk was getting too high and they needed to replace that? Through taking orders, they would know whenever their favorite customer is about to come in, and they would be able to have their drink waiting for them. For those who produce coffee as farmers, it's also important for them. 
One way that coffee producers would be able to make more money is if they were able to prove exactly where their coffee came from. And through the Internet of Things and using technology such as Coffee Coin, which runs on the blockchain, you can now buy coffee and know exactly which plot of land your coffee came from. So they can sell that as an upsell for their customers and be able to show them, you can now know that your coffee is from here and it is fair trade organic with actual proof to back it up. And you can also monitor the weather in your local area. When, with global warming the way it is right now, being able to track the weather patterns and be able to prepare your crops for that temperature drop and increase, you can be able to monitor and take care of your plants ahead of time before your entire season is run, especially since most of the coffee season only runs a couple months out of the year. An important thing to also remember when you're thinking about coffee, what a lot of people don't know, is that it's also a publicly traded commodity. And this is monitored through uh, the sea price. And this past fall, the price per pound of coffee had dropped so low that in El Salvador, if they had sold every ounce of coffee they had at the most high price, they still would not be able to, the farmers who create this coffee would still not be able to pay all of their bills and feed their families. Think about that for a second. I mean, I just can't even imagine the people who, I get my coffee every day and I pay $6 for coffee. And you're telling me the people who created this coffee can't pay their bills every day. But what we all in this room really can connect with the most and when it comes to coffee is, how can this make my life easier? How can I take advantage of the internet of things? Well, I am really sick of burning my mouth on my coffee, and I'm really sick of not knowing when my coffee was roasted and how fresh it is. Uh, so when people come up and they'll buy a cup of coffee from me or they'll buy a bag of coffee and they say, well, this was roasted two months ago. And uh, you know what I have to say is that this is the graph that shows the life of a coffee roast after it's roasted. And after the first 24 hours, you might as well have waited two weeks to drink that cup of coffee or to brew that cup of coffee because it completely plateaus. Um, but the way that the Internet of Things is helping the coffee industry is that you can now buy products that monitor the humidity in the air of your kitchen, the humidity in the truck that delivers that bag of coffee to you. You can look into the gas concentration, the mass, the volume. All of these different components go into your cup of coffee that you make every day. And this way that you're able to enjoy the best cup of coffee that you have ever had right in your house. And it'll alert you when your, cup, when your coffee is getting too old or too stale, and then you just buy a new cup of coffee and you go through the process again. But you waste, you're saving time by not having to drink a poor cup. Uh, and you're, they'll tell you when your roast is ready. And then also, uh, burning your mouth on a cup of coffee is the main reason why I do not drink hot coffee. I'll get an ice drink, I don't care what temperature is outside, it could be negative 40 degrees and I am walking down the road. I'll drink iced coffee because I don't want to burn my mouth. Uh, but what the way that the, inter the industry is changing right now is there's technology out there, like this mug by Ember, where on the bottom of it is you can turn and adjust the temperature of your coffee and when it hits the precise amount of, the precise temperature that you want to enjoy that cup, you are then able to enjoy it and it sends a notification to you and lets you know when it's ready. Taking advantage of this in more creative ways also is say, the temperature of your coffee can also change the taste of the coffee. And outside of just the temperature of itself, when you have it at 100 degrees or 120 degrees, it'll have a different flavor profile outside of just the heat alone. So this enables people to be able to enjoy coffee in a way that you wouldn't have been able to in the past. Uh, and so, for me as a drinker, when I go up to a coffee shop, it takes me approximately five minutes to place my order. I mean, I am the person on the left, I have to go and I take my time on placing my order. I go, okay, I'll have a large iced latte with a little bit of vanilla and oat milk. And the person on the left just has like their large cup of coffee. And I think what's great is that what if we were able to make this process more simple as me as a consumer and as the barista serving my drink and uh, who's also taking 100 drinks after working with me. So, will a cup of coffee actually taste better than the in thanks to the Internet of Things? It might, it might not, but that is all dependent on how you are as a person and how you prefer your coffee. 
But if you are able to learn enough about the Internet of Things to make your life more easier and enjoy more coffee, then my job here is done. Thank you.